You don't cease to be amazed that you're around in the presence of Elizabeth Taylor. I'll tell you Elizabeth Taylor story. We were, there are scenes that aren't in the movie that I shot with her. Elizabeth played the mob boss's mistress, who was also the mistress to the president. So anyway, she wore this uh, politically incorrect uh, leopard coat in one of the scenes that unfortunately is not in the movie. It was a beautiful coat, and she wanted the coat, she said. So I remember in one of these scenes, I was directing her, and Elizabeth Taylor was sitting at a table, and she was writing this note. And this, there was this flashing fury in her eyes. And I, I thought, my God, this is amazing. And then as she got up, I said, God, that's fantastic. I can't believe that. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. And she said, here. And, she, and then she walked away. And I looked at the note, and it said, if Bill Richard does not give me that fur coat, he's not going to get another close-up for three days. One day, we were all having lunch at the Polo Lounge at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Me, Elizabeth, and her husband, John Warner. So she's saying something about, she said, now, what do you, what, well, let's just talk about that coat, Bill. I said, Elizabeth, you're getting $100,000 for one week work. I said, you really can't ask for the coat. She said, but I want it. I said, well, I'll tell you what. I can't give it to you, and I'm not going to give it to you. Now, around the corner comes back John Warner, and she says, John, as loud as this, he's not going to give me the coat. He's got to give me the coat. And I said, well, I'm not going to give her the coat. And he said, that is, why wouldn't you give her the coat? Later on, in a moment of largesse, we gave her the coat in front of the whole crew. Then when the picture ran out of money, the furrier came and took it back. And I realized just at that moment, that this is what she did. She had all those, you know, all of her persona stuff was just a lot of it was play and having fun and having people on. And she enjoyed being who she was. I met Sterling Hayden in the lounge at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel. And just walking in the room, there's a sense, even on a Saturday afternoon, where it's full of executives and they're all getting ready for the weekend and their dinner and there's a busy bar and there's the maitre d'. And then Sterling Hayden walks in. And he has this long white beard. He's wearing his hat. So now we're sitting there, and the, the table's like this in the corner. And it was a big, round table. And Sterling sat next to me, and he kept saying, he said, I want you to work me really hard. He said, I want you, I, I, I want every one of these words in the movie. I want all of your words in the movie. Your brother was a miserable, cold-ass, arrogant son of a bitch. When he said, I, I'm, I'm glad to be part of this. He said, I, I, I'm sure it's going to be wonderful, Bill. I'm sure it's going to be wonderful. And he said, uh, he said, by the way, he said, um, uh, do you like cannabis? And I said, well, yeah, actually, I do. I don't mind cannabis. I, I think I, it's a healthy herb. He said, oh, I, I couldn't do without it. And he reaches into a pocket, and he has his, pulls out a meerschaum pipe, and then he takes it and he pulls this thing down, and it's like your grandfather's tobacco pouch. And he opens it up, and it's loaded with pot, right? And he takes it out, and he stuffs it in the meerschaum pipe. He takes out this Zippo lighter, and he lights it, right? And he's telling me other stories while he's doing it. I said, and he said, Would you, here you are, Bill. And I said, thank you very much. And I'm, <laughs> even now, I can't believe we did, or he did this, but the two of us were passing this gigantic meerschaum pipe back and forth, and which just told, shows you about society, though. If you do something bold enough and big enough, and said, nobody, they'll let you. They will let you. So uh, here we are, and these huge clouds of smoke pot drifting all over, and everybody's, it wasn't long, a whole place, and nobody said a word. Then it came time to shoot the scenes on the oil tanker, the TK. I arrived in Santa Barbara at 7 in the morning, and there's this big fog. And out there in the fog is this tanker with our movie crew on it. And the whole crew is up there, and Vilmos, and the cameras, and boom. And it looked just like a scene from Fellini, this big tank with a movie crew and, and, and lights. And so he comes over and hands me the thing, and, and, and a scop, and I said, well, how are you doing, Pete? Here we are. And he said, Bill, he said, I got to talk to you. I said, why? He says, uh, Boone's not going to shoot today. I said, Boone's not going to shoot today? What's he going to do? He says, he says, he's going fishing. He's going fishing? Where is he? He's at the hotel. So I get to the hotel, and I, I, and I call up, and I said, how you doing, Richard? And his voice is, oh, Bill, I feel weak as a kitten. I said, oh. I said, well, I mean, we can still get a little, a little acting out of you, don't you think? He said, oh, I hate to do this to you. You're being your, your first picture. He said, but I, I got a boat here, and I'm, I'm just going to go out and do some fishing. And I says, um, would you mind if I go along? I said, uh, since you're going, I got nothing to do either. 
He goes, oh, sure. So now Boone comes down and he's got two fishing rods. I said, well, Pete, I'm, I'm about to get on the boat. I don't know if I'll lose you or not. I'm, I'll get back to you, though, as soon as I can. So now we get there. Next thing you know, we're on this boat. I'm on a boat with Boone, and there's a little refrigerator. It was like a beer. And I said, oh, sure. So now this little boat goes out into the fog, followed by this huge tanker with the film crew on it. And we're just going back and forth. And Boone is telling me stories about Hemingway. And I'm listening. And the boat's moving like this with these huge waves. I forget it. This little boat. And uh, then behind me, I'm looking out. And there's this huge tanker following behind us. And I said, Boo, I said, what's the problem with your not wanting to shoot today? So, well, you know, they have that net. He said, they, there's no way to get onto that boat that you're going out to, but a net. He said, I can't go up in a net. I said, a net. He said, they, they said they have a net that you're going up in, and I can't go up in a net. I said, well, you don't have to go. I'm sure we can figure out another way when we get there, Boone. And then all of a sudden, there's a, a call for Boone, a special call. And the captain picks it up, and he said, uh, uh, Mr. Boone, there's a phone call for you. It was like out of the movie. So he picks up this thing and he listens for a second. And he said, okay. And he puts it back down and he turns to me and then he says, uh, well, he says, if that uh, net is uh, properly secured, I might be able to get into it after all. I said, really? I said, you, yeah. I said, oh, I, I might be able to get into it. So now I call up Pete. And I said, hey, Pete, looks like we're going to, it looks like everything is a go here, uh, you know. But it wasn't until later I found out that he got a call from his agent saying his check had cleared. So he was not he was going to go fishing until he got that check. And he was actually one of the few guys that got paid <laughs> on the movie because he really knew how to get it. So finally, we all go up in the net and get onto the TK. Boom, me, and the whole crew. And now we're on the TK. And the TK, every minute or maybe even every minute and a half, it goes because they're in the fog. And so now Boone says, I can't act with that noise. I said, oh, I can't act with that noise. Got to stop the noise. And so now we're all there. And now I got my little director's advantage. I said, you hear that? Richard Boone can't act with the noise. We all will sit out here in the middle of the fog, in the middle of the ocean, a giant ship, not able to see anything. So I said, they were going to cut off all. I said, cut off all the sound because Boone can't act with the noise. Right, Dick? And I remember he just looked at me like that. And it was this long look. And the two of us looked at each other. And he said, all right. <laughs> and we finished it because you could just be a little bit more lunatic than some of these lunatics. <laughs> <laughs>